Yep. So this is my 80 megapixel micro four thirds camera. So let's go ahead. Let's take some photographs with it and see how it performs. So I know what you're thinking, micro four thirds, how can you get 80 megapixel images? from a micro four thirds camera. It's just impossible, right? Well, actually, no. Let me explain. So first and foremost, sensor size has nothing to do with resolution. You can cram as many pixels as you like onto a camera sensor. Just ask any smartphone manufacturer at the minute where 200 million pixels seems to be the sweet spot. Probably not great for image quality, but it is certainly possible. Every format, in my opinion, has a sweet spot. Full frame, 36 megapixels, APS-C, 24 megapixels, and Micro Four Thirds, the cameras that I use, 20 megapixels seems to be the go-to. And this camera here, natively, is certainly no different. But Chris, you say in the opening segment of the video, you said that that was an 80 megapixel Micro Four Thirds camera. Well, it is, and it isn't. Let's put high resolution shooting mode on, and I'll show you some 80 megapixel photographs taken from a 20 megapixel sensor. Menu, computational mode, high res shot. Let's turn it on. We're in tripod mode. We have two modes. We have tripod and handheld, but for today's video, we're going to be on the tripod. So we'll put it in tripod mode. And you can see 80 megapixel fine photograph plus a raw file. There's different options on there. I'm gonna go for the 80 megapixel option. And there we go, easy as that. The camera will now take 80 megapixel photographs. So let's take a photograph of this scene behind the camera. So a lovely little scene, typical of a lot of places that you're going to see in the North Yorkshire Moors this time of year. A lot of fern, a lot of greenery, a stone path and an old wooden fence. Let's have a look. So we're F5, that's overexposed a little bit. F5.6, one sixth of a second and ISO 200. I'm going to focus on one of the posts closest to the camera, roughly a third of the way through this photograph. And there we go. If I press the shutter button, the camera's now going to take eight photographs shifting the sensor around and that's what gives us the high resolution photograph that I'm about to show you. So what's the point of all of this then? Why does a micro fourth thirds camera feel the need to do this? Well because it can, the technology is there so why not? And what do you gain by doing this? Well, you gain more resolution, which in turn leads to more fine detail. You gain an extra couple of stops of dynamic range in doing this. And you also reduce the noise in the photographs as well due to the stacking process that the camera's doing inside of it. So more resolution, larger prints, more fine details, more cropping power. And you're also improving a little bit of dynamic range and reducing the noise at the same time. But what you really want to know is how does it look doing a long exposure photograph of a moving subject? So this is a waterfall. Let's find out. So I've thrown my 8 to 25 f4 lens on and we're going to put some big circles on the front. On the front here is a polarizing filter and a 10 stop filter. That's going to give us a long exposure photograph. I'm hoping this is going to work out okay. The last time I tried to do a high resolution photograph was with the EM1 Mark II. 
especially with the long exposure stuff, it always looks a little bit janky. I'm wondering if, what if the technology's improved a little bit since then and we we'll might be able to get something that's usable. I'm crouched underneath a tree at the minute, it's a bit of a downpour, it's really, it's really coming down, but let's just see. A different spot, crouched away, a low angle of this waterfall. Let's see how it turns out. So let's turn the camera on, start taking a photograph. So I've just had a little bit of an aha moment and I've taken the 10 stop filter off. It was never going to work. So let's move over to the camera and let me explain why. So I've removed the 10 stop in favour of a 3 stop, which has put me down at 4 seconds at 5.6 and ISO 200. The reason 10 stop was never going to work is, yes, that was going to give me a 60 second exposure. The camera was going to take 8 of them. But even down at this, we're going to be not 8 times 4, which is 32. So it's still going to be 32 seconds worth of exposure time, or it's going to be done over a series of photographs. If I'd have left this at 60 seconds, we'd have been here all day. So let's have a look, let's see what this is going to do. So the polarising filter is just taking some of the reflection off the water. I can't remove it all, it's getting rid of some of it, but we can just about see through the water. There's still going to be some white bits in there. But this is more of an experiment to see if this is possible. So let's go ahead and let's take this photograph. So those of you that live in the UK, especially anywhere around where I live, you'll know that just how much of a dry spring and summer that we've had so far, which has kind of presented an opportunity with this waterfall. It's kind of a low water coming over it right now, despite the fact that it is really, really raining right now where I'm stood. But I'm able to get in the middle of this waterfall, which is somewhere I wouldn't normally be able to get. So I'm going to wait for this rain shower to pass by a little bit, and we may see if we can get a tripod in amongst all of this lot, but just see there are one, two, three, four, there's currently five little cascades. Let's see if we can put a wide angle lens, we can get them all in there. I'm going to go get under a tree and shelter. It's not fun. All right, so I've made it into the middle of the waterfall now. There's been a bit of a reprieve in the rain, so I think we'll try and take this photograph. It's slippery and it's a bit scary. I'm not too sure how far I'm going to be able to move. But man the view from here. Let me bring the camera around and I'll show you what I can see. And I'll talk you through the composition that I have in mind. So here we are, we're stood in the waterfall right now. So here's the camera. We have a small little cascade down towards the left. Up towards the main waterfalls, we have three levels of it because it's not quite in full flow. Usually this middle part here, this is all one fall. And down this side, this is a little bit more impressive. It kind of comes along there in a fan. And then just down towards the bottom right hand corner as well, we also have another little waterfall. So let's just see if we can get using the wide angle lens, just see if we can get as much of this in as possible. I may concentrate on this area if I can't get the opposite side in, but yeah, I think it's fun. The other problem of course here is, well, you can see how bright the sky is. That's always a little bit of a game, but let's just see what we can do with this one with a wide angle lens. Okay, so the camera is set up. We're going to get clever here, I think. Are we going to do a HDR long exposure high resolution photograph? There is a lot going on. But there is a tree in the background of this photograph and I really want to include it in there. But the sky behind it is so bright, I don't think even with the added benefit of the extra dynamic range we'd get all of that in there. So it's going to be a three shot, three stops either way. Just see if we can't retain something in the sky. Now there is not a lot of sky up there but it's just the way of retaining one of the trees. So let's go ahead and take this photograph. All right, so let's go for this then. So I have the polarizing filter taking some of the shine off of the rocks, and it's also popping a little bit of the greenery as well. We have the three stop filter on there, giving us that long exposure look, and we're down at 3.2 seconds at F8 and ISO 200. So this is the middle exposure. This is the one that's going to give us the vast majority of the detail in this photograph. It's going to take a little bit of time to do it because like the previous one, it has to take this photograph eight times. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, maybe 25-ish seconds for this one. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to underexpose by three stops and take the exact same photograph without moving the camera. 
I think this one's almost there. It's weird because you can see every time it takes a photo, it updates it on the back of the camera. Now it's telling me it's busy, which is merging all of the information together. So now using the shutter button, 1.6, sorry, a sixth of a second F8 ISO 200, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the same eight images. This is going to stack it once again. Let's get, ah, oh, that was a lot quicker, that one. This last one's probably going to be the pain in the bum. Let's have a look. So that's done that. Have we got any information in the sky? That's the teller. There seems to be something. If I press the info button, yeah, that's good. So the sky's not clipped in that one. So now I'm going to go the opposite way. Three stops. Uh, 60 seconds. No, we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it at two. I'm not going to sit here for eight minutes and do this. So here's this final photograph. There's going to be a lot of merging going on. I hope it looks okay. Well, thank you very much for watching today's video. A little introduction to the high resolution shooting mode on my OM system, OM1 Mark II. So to recap, what are the benefits of doing this? Well, you get more resolution. And more resolution, as I've said, always improves small and fine details. You increase dynamic range a little bit. Now this camera natively has 13.6 stops of dynamic range which in the real world is more than anybody is ever really going to need to use. And if you need to use 13.6 stops worth of dynamic range, well, maybe you're doing something wrong. So the extra dynamic range hasn't really been a benefit for me today, but it's there if you need it. The noise reduction elements of it, yes, this is a small sensor. Yes, it creates a little bit more noise at equivalent ISOs than larger format cameras. So anything to improve noise performance is always a good thing, in my opinion. But what's more, it's a little bit of fun. It's a party trick that a camera can do, because why not? So thank you very much for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a like and a thumbs up. It does help the video and it helps new viewers to see my content. And if you're new here, you see me for the very first time, you want to see some more micro forefest content every single week, well, why not press that subscribe button somewhere down below and you'll see more micro forefest nonsense every single week. So until the next time, I'm going to try not to slip and break a camera, and I'll say peace, and goodbye. How do I get out of here without dying, then? Oh, dear. Oh, we're going for it.